thanking and recognizing CDPH Commissioner Dr. Allison Arwady, BACP Commissioner Rosa Escarino, um, Deputy Mayor for Neighborhood and Economic Development Samir Mayakar, Alderman Emma Mitz from the West Side, Alderman Tom Tunney uh, from the North Side, uh, Illinois Association President and CEO Sam Toya, um, our good friend and partner in crime, um, Club Pilates studio owner Abby Phelps, um, owner and executive chef of Virtu Restaurant, uh, Eric Williams, um, and Brian Fitzpatrick, co-founder and CTO of TOC, uh, who's going to talk about a very innovative um, technology uh, app that will help facilitate, I think, a, a number of things in the restaurant and hospitality world. Over the past six months, we've had to make difficult decisions, as you all know, all of which were rooted in um, what we were seeing in our city's COVID-19 data. Asking residents and workers and businesses to make a lot of sacrifices in the name of public safety and public health. And people have risen uh, to the occasion all over our city. It was because of the citywide uh, cooperation and collaboration that Chicago never saw a huge surge um, in cases once we started to gently reopen. All the modeling predicted that we would see a surge. The question was only how large. And luckily, because of all the hard work and sacrifice of so many, including individual residents, that fate didn't come to us. However, COVID-19 is still here, and we must still remain diligent. But as a result of all the work that's gone into our response, um, we remain the most open big city in the entire country. And that's what makes today's announcement even more important. Today we're coming together to announce that our city has made sufficient progress in the fight against COVID-19 to ease some of the restrictions on our businesses and give them more ability to grow and to earn revenue as we start to head into the winter months. Now we still have a long way ahead on our, our recovery journey. I think everybody can understand that. Being able to open further today is just one small step we're taking based on what we're seeing in the data. And let me also just say, this, is, this announcement today is a result of partnership. It's a result of communications. And I've got to thank Sam um, and members of the hospitality industry, individual restaurateurs, who have really been diligent um, in the sacrifices that they've had to make, but also been very consistent in their advocacy, if the data was right, for us to do more. And that's why we are here today. It also means that difficult decisions and sacrifices that we've all had to make are moving us slowly but surely forward. And that along the way, we must continue to adapt and learn, especially as the weather gets colder, so we can provide for and protect our residents, our workers, and our business community. As we're all aware, COVID-19 has taken a devastating toll on our businesses who were forced to close their doors, furlough workers, or even shut down in the early stages of the pandemic. This is in no way, shape, or form a sustainable economic environment, and we all know that. All of us have been dramatically impacted by COVID-19, and our city's uh, revenues have taken a substantial hit, as we all know. So today's announcement is not only foundational to the economic recovery of our entire city, but also for the businesses, large and small, that are our city's backbone and that help our communities thrive. Starting this Thursday, October 1st, Chicago will ease five of our phase four, four, four guidelines for businesses, and let me outline those. Number one, indoor capacity will expand from current 25% to 40% for businesses, including restaurants, health and fitness centers, personal services, and non-essential retail. Mass and capacity for any space remains at 50. Second, breweries, taverns, and bars may reopen with indoor seating at 25% capacity or 50 people, whichever is fewer. Third, bars and restaurants serving alcohol will now be able to continue serving until 1 a.m. and remain open until 1.30 a.m. Fourth, the maximum group size of health and fitness classes and after school programming will increase from 10 to 15. And finally, personal services that require the removal of face coverings, such as facials and shaves, will now be al allowed. <clears throat> 
to mitigate the risks that come with increased capacity, and there are risks, make no mistake about it, we will be putting uh, four new protocols in place. Uh, first, unless actively eating or drinking, diners at restaurants must wear face coverings while seated. Let me say that again. Unless you are eating or drinking, you must wear face coverings while seated. Now look, as a person who tries to dine out and support our local businesses, I know that this requirement is a pain in the butt. Let's just be blunt about it. But it is absolutely necessary to protect you, protect other diners, and importantly, protect the workers who are coming to your table. So we said, and we know that this is important, when you are engaging with a service person who comes to your table, whether it's the person bringing you water, checking on how you're doing, or your waiter, you must wear a face covering engaging with others. That's critically important, and we're encouraging you when you are not actively eating or drinking and you're just talking to the person that you're dining with, wear a face covering. Because it's not just about you. When you leave, whatever you brought in, whatever you've done during that dining experience stays and the workers have to clean up and they're putting themselves at risk. So please wear a face covering while seated when you're not eating or drinking. Second, there will be no walking up to the bar. Breweries, taverns, and bars must have customers seated when e eating and drinking and ordering. So I know we're all used to going up to the bar to order whatever it is that we want. That will not be allowed. People will come to your table where you are seated to take your order. Please make sure that you abide by this restriction on bars and taverns. Third, Personal services requiring the removal of face masks should be kept under 15 minutes. Now, again, I know to get a shave, to get a facial in 15 minutes is a big ask, but it's an ask that we are making, um, obviously, for uh, public health reasons. And the employees conducting the service must have a face covering on at all times. And I think a lot of uh, the personal services uh, folks are doing a terrific job with this, but we want to make sure that we emphasize this because it's important. And fourth, all places of business should provide hand sanitizer to customers and employees upon entry. Now, a lot of folks are doing a great job with that, but we want to make that practice uniform. That's important. I'm also pleased to say that thanks to our city's partnership with the technology company TOC, and that's T-O-C-K, uh, which is developed right here in Chicago, more businesses will be able to assist in our city's contract tasting efforts through their reservation system. Through this partnership, TOC will provide free set, set up and a six month subscription to TOC Plus Light to restaurants and bars without reservation systems in areas of our city uh, below 60% of the area median income. What we're trying to do is make sure that when people come into your restaurant, come into your place of, of, of uh, business, that there is a way to know who was there and to track them in the event that we need to do a case investigation or contact tracing. This is being done in other parts of the world and other parts of the country. Now we have the ability to bring it right here in Chicago, um, and we'll talk more about that. This gives technology solutions to businesses in low-income areas that may need these enhanced capabilities simply to survive. This partnership reflects our city's commitment to inclusion and innovation and will also help further, this, uh, further slow the spread of this disease by quickly connecting people with the testing and care that they need should they or someone they know come into contact with COVID-19. Today's new guidelines are the result of the hard work and hard choices our re you, our residents, our workers, and our businesses have made to keep our entire city safe. They mean that we as a city are making slow but steady progress in our recovery efforts. But what these new guidelines do not mean is that we are out of the throes of this disease. Not so. Unfortunately, we're seeing um, states nearby um, and across the country open up entirely as if COVID-19 has suddenly disappeared. It has not. 
We continue to see new cases every single day. We continue to see new hospitalizations every single day. And while the number of deaths that we're recording every day has gone down substantially from its peak, people are still dying from COVID-19. So we have to remain diligent in our approach to making sure that we do everything that we can to respond to this horrible, horrible virus. <clears throat> Earlier this summer, we lost progress. Back in uh, August, we saw cases really shoot up. And it's taken us some time and a lot of work on the part of a lot of different folks, including our fearless public health department workers, our community partners, to work to bring the numbers back down. We also heard complaints from workers that, be, that were being put in unsafe positions because their employers weren't complying with city guidelines. It's critically important that as we take this next step forward, that all of our workers um, know that they are, we are here for you and we will step in to protect you if you do not feel safe in your workplace. And the flip side of that is employers, our expectations is that you are going to do everything you can to keep your workers and members of the public safe from this virus. Many of you got the memo months ago and have done extraordinary and creative things to keep both your workers and members of the public safe. But we need to remain diligent and we need you to step up and dig down a little bit deeper as we relax some of the restrictions um, in this next step. Before I close, um, I really want to again thank everybody who's come here today. I want to thank our Department of Public Health for always being diligent, working hard, and being um, open to conversations with businesses around how we can get to the same place but get there safely. That's very important. We will continue the important dialogue that we've had uh, with residents all across the city, uh, businesses of every type, uh, to make sure that we remain the safest uh, big city, the most open big city, um, and that we continue to make progress in our continued fight against COVID-19. And at this point, I'll invite Dr. Arwady to the podium to provide further details on where we are as a city. Doctor.